Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. iPadOS 17.4 should be out today, or very soon, depending on when I release this. Now this update wasn't everything I was hoping for, but there are still some new features to talk about. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Apple has added a number of new emoji in this update. The main new emojis are two different types of shaking heads, a phoenix, a lime, and a chain breaking. Seems like kind of a random assortment, but I guess that's how these things come. There are also a number of non-gendered family emojis that were added. And there are some directional emoji of people facing either left or right. When you factor in the gender and race variations on these, Emojipedia says we are technically getting 118 new emoji. The Apple Podcast app can now auto-generate transcripts. This looks pretty similar to the way lyrics are presented in the music app. So for an example, let's go to the podcast app, and I'm going to play an episode of the Kinda Funny Xcast, because I know it will work. So when you start playing, and you go to the Now Playing screen, you'll see in the bottom right corner, there is a speech bubble icon that may be grayed out for a few seconds. When you tap on that, you get to see the transcripts in an interface that's very similar to the lyrics feature in the music app. The transcripts auto-scroll as the podcast goes. And you can tap on part of the text to skip ahead to that part. I said I knew this podcast would work because I tried a few other podcasts before this, and they were either too long and it looked like the process timed out, or the button was just grayed out altogether and never changed. So your mileage may vary. Everyone's favorite virtual assistant gains the ability to read incoming messages to you in a different language than the one you have set on your tablet. To get to this, you go into Settings, then go into Siri and Search, and then tap on Messaging with Siri. On that screen, you'll see this Read Messages section. When you tap on Add Language, you get a list of the languages supported for this feature. It looks like you get a pretty healthy selection of options to choose from, but this could vary depending on what region you're in. So your list may look different than what I have here. If you use the Music and Podcast apps, the Listen Now section has been renamed to Home. I guess maybe calling it Home is a little bit clearer, but regardless, it's a change. The Music app will also note that there are now monthly replay mixes in addition to the yearly ones we've been getting to this point if you use Apple Music. Now that's not really a 17.4 feature. Apple actually announced that a few weeks before this update went out, but they're gonna tell you about it here. Which is kind of weird because the replay experience remains mostly a web thing anyway. So the OS version really doesn't matter that much. There's been an improvement to the music recognition screen when you ask Siri what song is playing. Now when you get to that screen, if you go in the upper right corner, there's this ellipsis. And when you tap on that, you get a variety of options like adding the song to your Apple Music library, adding it to a playlist, or sharing it. The clock app gets a new widget, and most importantly for me, a new digital widget because I prefer the digital ones over the analog. So if you jump into the widget gallery for the clock, swipe over a few, and you'll see the new city digital widget, which gives you a digital time for a city of your choosing. The App Store purchase history has been enhanced to show more of your purchases beyond just apps. So to see that, go ahead and go into the App Store, tap on the person icon in the upper right corner, and you'll see your, your App Store settings and your updates here. If you tap on this new purchase history section, you will see a list of not only your app purchases, but your various subscriptions, including your subscriptions for apps, but also for different services like Apple One. And you'll also be able to see videos you've purchased or rented through the TV app. It's unclear to me why you would want this here, but more information I guess is always better. So here it is. If you are an Apple Cash user, you are now able to generate virtual card numbers through the wallet section of the settings app. 
which might be handy for sites you don't 100% trust and want the extra protection that comes with the virtual card number. You find this by going into Settings, Wallet, and Apple Pay, Apple Cash, Card Information, and then you tap on the option to set up a virtual card number and go through those steps. The enhanced iMessage security is going to be a bigger thing for those of us in the US where iMessage is more widely used. But in iPadOS 17.4, as well as the corresponding updates on their other platforms, Apple is going to begin using a new cryptographic encryption protocol called PQ3. The idea behind what they're doing is that today, the computational intensity required to break through standard encryption protocols doesn't realistically exist with today's machines. But one day, quantum computers will be real and potentially have enough capability to essentially brute force through current encryption methods. Apple's trying to get ahead of this by starting to imply what they are calling a post-quantum cryptographic protocol. The goal is that even if, say, there was a bad actor somewhere who was storing encrypted iMessage data with the intention of decrypting it someday when quantum computing is more realistic, it should be much harder for them to do so because of this stronger encryption Apple is applying. The good people over at 9to5Mac did some digging and found some text in one of the iPadOS 17.4 betas to suggest that the upcoming iPad Pros will have a landscape-oriented front-facing camera, which many people, myself included, have been eagerly waiting for. It's highly likely that iPadOS 17.4 is what will ship on the upcoming new iPads that are rumored for March. I talked about what you can expect from these upcoming iPad Pros in a previous video, which I will, of course, link to in the description. There are a couple things I was expecting in this update that appear to not be here. The first is a new live activity for the stopwatch that is coming to iOS. iPadOS got live activities with version 17, so it's a little surprising to me that this stopwatch activity appears to not be here. The other thing iPadOS is not getting are essentially all of the changes the European Union is enforcing on iOS in version 17.4. I've already made a video about my disappointment about this and I'll link to it in the description, but needless to say, I'm still disappointed and will continue to hope that Apple just starts making some of these changes, which I argued are more sorely needed on iPad than they are on iPhone. The one thing iPadOS does get is more of a policy change. Now, game streaming apps can exist without having to have each individual game submitted and approved by app review, which is really unrealistic and made it so these apps essentially could not exist. So that change will be live with 17.4. And that's really it for what's new in iPadOS 17.4. We're entering the part of the year where feature updates will start winding down as Apple is working on getting iPadOS 18 and their other OS updates ready for WWDC in the summer. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for hanging in there. If you could like the video and subscribe to the channel on your way out, that would really help out both me and the channel. Make sure you also follow me on social media. And with that, I will catch you in the next one.